Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host with another marvellous video. This time, every 44 symbiote ever. Without a doubt, the Marvel Universe has created some pretty bizarre entities, but the entire thread on symbiotes is probably the most intriguing one. These entities are the literal embodiment of a living abyss. In a world where amorphous, inorganic, symbiotic extraterrestrials lurk in the cosmic shadows, one unlikely hero's fashion choice sparked an entire universe of bizarre and distinguished characters. The first symbiote we witnessed was when Spider-Man decided to switch up his style with a sleek black suit in Amazing Spider-Man number 252. Little did the world know that this seemingly innocuous costume would lead to a symphony of chaos and creation. symbiotes have been here since the dawn of time, but didn't step foot on Earth until Eddie Brock, our anti-hero extraordinaire, unwittingly became the vessel for one such symbiote, giving rise to the infamous Venom. But it didn't end with just Venom as its host. This family tree extends far and wide, with a riotous gathering of symbiotes and hosts forming a captivating web of interconnected characters. With Venom's popularity soaring over three decades, the Marvel Universe now teams with an enthralling array of symbiotic beings, each vying for the title of most powerful. In this video, we'll delve into the creme de la creme of symbiotes that have carved their place in superhero folklore. Brace for the delightful weirdness and astounding power as we unveil the marvelous secrets of this unique universe. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Null. This guy is literally the god of all symbiotes. An ancient primary creator who has enough cosmic force to single-handedly deal with Earth's most powerful heroes. Null was born from the primordial void at the dawn of creation and manifested a living abyss into the All Black, the first ever symbiote forged into a deadly blade. With this cosmic weapon, he waged war against even the mighty Celestials who were being led by Silver Surfer, but their attempts to bring light into the dark vastness of space proved futile against his might. From the shadows, Null fashioned a suit of symbiote armor ascending to become an all-powerful cosmic being capable of spawning a vast legion of symbiotes at will. As the god of the symbiotes, he reigned for billions of years, crafting a legacy that would ripple across the cosmos. The true origins of the alien symbiotes remain shrouded in mystery until the fourth volume of Venom and the King in Black event miniseries, revealing Null's role in their creation. Inspired by his first victory over the Celestials, Null unleashed a dark army of symbiotes, determined to conquer the universe. But destiny had other plans, because when these symbiotes reached Earth, Thor briefly stood against them, infecting them with a sense of honor that united them against their own creator. In a twist of fate, the symbiotes imprisoned Null, becoming the Clintar race that would encounter heroes like Spider-Man eons later. However, Null's dark power refused to remain dormant forever. Manipulating and corrupting Scorn, he orchestrated his own resurrection, setting the stage for an apocalyptic confrontation. Yet Earth's heroes, joined by the cosmic might of Captain Universe, stood united against Null's malevolence, ending his reign of darkness. Venom Symbiote In the depths of a cathedral's bell tower, when a distraught Peter Parker severed his connection with the symbiote in Web of Spider-Man No. 1, little did he know that this fateful act would lead to a sinister alliance that would haunt him for years to come. When Spider-Man debunked Eddie Brock's claim about a local serial killer, his life fell apart, leaving him bitter and blacklisted. As fate would have it, Peter's rejection of the symbiote coincided with Eddie praying below the tower, and the symbiote found its new host in Amazing Spider-Man No. 300. United by their shared animosity towards Spider-Man, they transformed into a powerful villain known as Venom. Though Venom has into anti-hero territory in recent times, there's no denying the threat he once posed to our friendly neighborhood hero. The symbiote, having copied Spider-Man's powers during their partnership, granted Eddie superhuman strength, enhanced speed, regenerative healing, and an array of deadly tendrils at his disposal. Even Spider-Man's famed Spider-Sense was rendered useless against Venom's cunning camouflaged abilities. But Venom's legacy doesn't end with Eddie Brock alone. The symbiote has a colorful history of bonding with various hosts, including Angelo Fortunato, Flash Thompson, and Weighing, and even the likes of Carol Danvers. However, Eddie Brock remains the most iconic and renowned version of this menacing villain, solidified by his appearance in the 28 blockbuster film. The symbiote itself is a part of the Clintar race of alien symbiotes symbiotes, seeking hosts to sustain its life force while offering immense power in return. Yet, this unholy union comes with a dangerous price, as the symbiote's insidious nature seeks to engulf both mind and body of its hosts. This symbiote's separation from its host is only achieved through the forceful impact of intense sound waves. Nonetheless, through twists of fate and alliances, the saga of Venom continues to weave its dark and threatening threads in the tapestry of Spider-Man's world. 
Carnage, Symbiote. In the dark annals of the Marvel Universe, a chilling union of evil was forged when Eddie Brock and the Venom Symbiote were separated, only to find themselves imprisoned alongside the sadistic serial killer Cletus Cassidy. A fortuitous twist of fate brought the Symbiote back to Eddie, but in a bizarre turn, it asexually reproduced like an amoeba, spawning a new, even deadlier Symbiote that bonded with Cassidy in The Amazing Spider-Man number 345, and thus the monstrous villain known as Carnage was born. Carnage emerged as the 999th generation of Symbiote surpassing even Venom in power and malevolence. Possessing all of Venom's abilities and more, Carnage was faster, stronger, and equipped to transform the symbiote into lethal weapons like blades and axes. Unlike Venom symbiotes, Carnage and Cassidy were inseparable, bonded at a cellular level. This chilling connection granted Cassidy the ability to reform Carnage at will, leaving heroes helpless in their attempts to separate the sinister duo. The unholy alliance between Cletus Cassidy and Carnage sparked an unending reign of terror. Escaping from prison, Carnage unleashed a brutal killing spree that caught the attention of Spider-Man and Venom, leading to a powerful team-up and resulting in the defeat of the malevolent symbiote. However, Carnage proved relentless, returning time and again to challenge the planet's mightiest heroes, requiring formidable teams to thwart his murderous ramp page. With his bloodlust driving the symbiote's growth, Carnage's insidious nature reached new heights as he manipulated new hosts like Arthur Crane, forever entwining his name with terror and darkness. Originally named Chaos and then considered as Ravage before finally settling on Carnage, this nefarious villain remains an iconic and fearsome nemesis in the Marvel Universe. A chilling blend of Spider-Man's powers, the symbiote's capabilities, and the madness of a serial killer, Carnage stands as a testament to the enduring and sinister allure of the symbiote's legacy. Anti-Venom Symbiote So, there are two unique anti-Venom beings that stand apart from the rest. Unlike their sentient counterparts, these artificial symbiotes lacked sentience, granting their hosts complete control over their powers and abilities. The origin of the first anti-Venom symbiote can be traced back to a time when Venom temporarily bonded with Mac Gargan, also known as Scorpion. Simultaneously, Eddie Brock discovered he had cancer in the spectacular Spider-Man number 4. However, in a miraculous turn of events in Amazing Spider-Man number 569, Eddie was healed. But the process altered the traces of the Venom symbiote within his cells. So, when Venom attempted to reunite with Eddie, his cells rejected the symbiote, creating a new entity, the Anti-Venom symbiote. Diverging from the villainous traits of Venom, Anti-Venom possessed incredible healing powers, capable of restoring his host's health and aiding those around him, leading to the end of his life force in a heroic act to cleanse Manhattan of the spider virus. But his legacy didn't end there, because a scientist kept his remnants to create a supposed cure for Venom's toxins. However, when it was administered to Flash Thompson in Amazing Spider-Man Venom Inc. Alpha No. 1, it instead bonded with a portion of the Venom symbiote attached to Flash, transforming him into the new agent Anti-Venom who could produce antibodies bodies that could cure diseases and heal its host or others. This healing touch sets it apart as a powerful ally in the battle against ailments and injuries. Additionally, Anti-Venom wields a corrosive touch, a potent weapon against other symbiotes, causing significant damage to their forms. Mania. The creation of Mania, the Venom clone, was a result of sinister genetic engineering by the Ararat Corporation, involving a mutant strain of nanotechnological alien race. As a genetically engineered symbiote, it was intended to be a harbinger of destruction, capable of wiping out humanity. Its existence began with a severed piece of Venom's tongue, which the corporation cloned and used to create the symbiote known as Mania. Initially, the symbiote bonded with Patricia Robertson, a U.S. Army communications specialist. However, it refused to permanently bond with anyone, choosing instead to go on a relentless killing spree, consuming every person the corporation presented to it. Eventually, Mania managed to escape its prison and began spreading terror and chaos across the country. During its rampage, Mania encountered Eddie Brock and sought to bond with him to fulfill its purpose. The symbiote's origin was later revealed when it was absorbed back into Venom's biomass. However, the essence of Mania remained within the Venom symbiote, waiting for an opportunity to emerge again. Mania found a new host and a young student named Andrea Benton when Flash Thompson, the agent anti-Venom, shielded her with his symbiote. So, Andrea gained control over the symbiote, and the two began working together as heroes, using its wall-crawling and shape-shifting abilities. Physically, Mania resembled Venom, but its true power was displayed in its sadistic tendencies, often toying with its prey before consuming them. Throughout its existence, Mania switched hosts periodically, needing to consume its current host to survive. Its ultimate purpose was to combine with the original Venom to carry out the Ararat Corporation's plan of eradicating all life on Earth. Scream Symbiote So, the Life Foundation symbiotes, fearing the potential fallout of the Cold War, aim to create a comfortable haven for their wealthy clients in the event of a nuclear holocaust. As part of their plan to create superhuman guardians for their organizations, five different symbiotes were forcefully spawned from parts of the Venom symbiote, leading to a different level of bond with their respective hosts compared to the strong bond between Eddie Brock and Venom. Donna Diego, 
a security officer working for the Life Foundation, found herself bonded with an alien symbiote that had been forcibly spawned from the Venom symbiote. Donna became Scream, one of the superhuman guardians of the organization. However, unlike the other Life Foundation symbiotes, Scream was an outcast, suffering from a history of schizophrenia. She decided to test her newfound abilities by launching an assault on a mall in California, but Spider-Man intervened and managed to force her to retreat to the Life Foundation's headquarters, leading him to rescue Venom and defeat the other five symbiotes. Although the Life Foundation symbiote survived the encounter, it took a toll on Scream's mental state. Struggling with her schizophrenia, she became convinced that all symbiotes would eventually become corrupted. As a result, she attempted to kill her fellow symbiote siblings, but Venom foiled her plans and chose not to kill her, showing a level of mercy. Over time, Donna learned to cope with her mental illness and reached an understanding with her symbiote. This newfound understanding allowed her to briefly operate as a hero alongside Venom. She assisted Venom in defeating various foes, but her efforts ended in betrayal and tragedy. In Venom number 15, Eddie Brock, Venom, killed Scream for the same reasons she'd once tried to kill her symbiote siblings. This symbiote's powers resembled those of Venom's, including superhuman strength, agility, enhanced durability, and the ability to form tendrils from her hair, which she used as weapons to ensnare and immobilize enemies. Agony Symbiote Another one of the fearsome symbiote siblings created from Venom by the Life Foundation, Agony found its host in the daring security officer Leslie Gisneria, who bravely volunteered for the Life Foundation's twisted experiments. Driven by its dark vision, the organization forcibly extracted multiple offspring directly from the Venom symbiote, artificially aging them to maturity. Leslie was destined to bond with one of these symbiote offspring, making her a powerful member of the Life Foundation's elite guardians. Agony, unlike her siblings, possessed a unique and deadly ability, the power to spit acid. Her venomous projectiles could dissolve even Spider-Man's resilient webbing and melt through her foe's defenses. With her remarkable talent for deconstructing and creating chemical compounds, she proved to be a challenging adversary on the battlefield. But as Agony and her siblings gained more control over their hosts, the symbiotes faced a troubling dilemma. They struggled to maintain their own wills and prevent succumbing to the symbiote's desires. Desperate for guidance, they turned to the notorious Venom, hoping he'd teach them how to wield their powers responsibly. Yet, Eddie Brock, harboring dark fears of their potential psychopathic tendencies, refused to be their mentor. As the story unfolded in the thrilling Venom Separation Anxiety series, Agony's sibling, Scream, turned her worst fears into reality. Scream began a ruthless vendetta, systematically eliminating her symbiote brethren one by one. Tragically, Agony was the first to fall at Scream's merciless hands, serving as a testament to the dark experiments that unleashed these fearsome creatures upon the unsuspecting universe. With her deadly acid-spitting power and a legacy of destruction, Agony left an indelible mark on the mesmerizing tapestry of symbiotic lore. Toxin Symbiote So, Toxin emerged from Carnage as the 1,000th spawn in the lineage of Venom and was feared by both Carnage and Venom alike because they believed that he could grow to become invincible, surpassing all its predecessors. Carnage, filled with hatred and fear for this potential powerhouse, sought to eliminate the symbiote offspring. However, Venom, intrigued by the idea of raising the offspring as his villainous ally, intervened and named the newborn Toxin. Ultimately, Toxin found its host in the form of Patrick Mulligan, an NYPD officer, seeking protection from the wrath of Venom and Carnage. As Patrick bonded with Toxin, he attempted to lead a heroic life, but the constant fear of the symbiote's monstrous potential haunted him. Facing threats from both Venom and Carnage, Toxin proved its strength by overpowering its own progenitors in a fierce battle. However, Patrick's constant terror of losing control to the symbiote led him to flee from his family, seeking to nurture Toxin as a hero. Yet, their efforts were thwarted when the malevolent demon Blackheart killed Patrick, seizing control control of Toxin for his own nefarious purposes. Blackheart's manipulation forced Toxin to bond with Eddie Brock, transforming the symbiote into a vicious villain on a mission to kill Flash Thompson in his Agent Venom identity. However, Toxin faced numerous defeats, leaving it severely weakened and a mere shadow of its former self. Despite its dark past and tumultuous journey, Toxin remained a potent force in the symbiotic realm. With its poisonous fangs and immunization towards Spider-Man's spider sense, Toxin proved to be an extremely powerful and challenging adversary for the web-slinger. Phage Symbiote Phage was an integral part of the Life Foundation symbiote's experiment, with the distinguished ability to form his symbiote suit into sharp and deadly blades, enabling him to eviscerate his foes with deadly precision. Initially bonded with Carl Mack, a mercenary in the Life Foundation's private security force, Phage and his siblings were sent to recapture Venom when he escaped his imprisonment. The ensuing battle against Venom and Spider-Man saw the symbiote duo greatly outnumbered, but they emerged victorious when Venom used a device that seemingly aged each of the five symbiotes to dust in Venom Lethal Protector. Number 5. 
hybrid symbiote. So, Scott Washington was a disabled prison guard at the vault, and when the government decided to violently torture an experiment on the imprisoned symbiotes, Riot, Phage, Agony, and Lasher, in a secret lab under the facility, Scott realized the suffering the symbiotes endured and decided to set them free. In Venom, along came a spider, number one. Weakened by the experiments, the four symbiotes merged together to survive, forming a powerful new symbiote entity known as Hybrid, with the abilities of each individual symbiote. The newly freed Hybrid bonded with Scott, an act that changed both of them for the better. Unlike many other symbiote hosts, Scott's empathy influenced Hybrid positively, turning them into one of the few true heroes among the symbiotes. Together, they began fighting crime as a vigilante in Scott's neighborhood, using their powers to bring justice and help the community. Hybrid's influence kept Scott from succumbing to violence and revenge, guiding him towards seeking justice rather than revenge for the death of his brother. Hybrid possesses spider-like powers similar to Venom and Carnage, but the uniqueness lies in the four symbiotes that originally formed him. This fusion granted Hybrid the ability to camouflage himself, sense other symbiotes, and even transform, granting him the power of flight. Tragically, Hybrid's heroics were cut short when Eddie Brock, the original Venom, killed him in Venom No. 15 in an attempt to eliminate all evil forms of the symbiote. Ray's symbiote. Like many others, Agent Claire Dixon led an elite FBI task force dedicating to eradicating symbiote threats, with a particular focus on capturing the notorious Cletus Cassidy, aka Carnage. Cassidy, however, had become the target of a fanatical cult that worshipped the ancient god Gathan. The cult's dark rituals imbued Carnage with potent magical abilities, granting him the power to create controllable symbiote spawns. In a sinister turn of events, Carnage used his newfound powers to create the Ray's symbiote, which he cunningly bonded with Agent Dixon, placing her under his malevolent control. Trapped within the symbiote's grasp, Dixon's will was subjugated by the wicked Cassidy. Thankfully, salvation came from an unexpected source, a newly spawned symbiote that bonded with Jubileel Van Scotter. Through clever manipulation, this symbiote harnessed the Razor symbiote's abilities and managed to break Cathan's dark hold over Cassidy, liberating Agent Dixon from his control. Raze, as the symbiote came to be known, possessed a subtle enhancement in strength due to its exposure to the mystical energies of the dark hold during the ritual. Despite this latent potential, circumstances circumstances prevented Ray's from fully showcasing her true power, leaving untapped potential within her. During an intense confrontation with Carnage and Cathan, Jubileel utilized her symbiote's abilities, absorbing the Ray's symbiote to augment her own powers. Together, they valiantly fought to banish the eldritch god Cathan back to his realm, protecting Earth from his malevolence. Ultimately, after a grueling battle in the aid of the Darkhold, Cathan was vanquished, but it appeared that the symbiotes absorbed by Jubileel were no more. Riot Symbiote Before 2018, Riot was a relatively obscure symbiote in the Marvel Universe, not even receiving a name until Carnage USA No. 2 in 2012, nearly a decade after its introduction in Venom Lethal Protector No. 4 in 1993. However, Riot's fame took a massive leap when Sony Pictures featured the symbiote as the central antagonist in the 2018 Venom movie, where he was portrayed as the leader of an advanced party sent to Earth by the Clintar species, preparing for a full-scale symbiote invasion. It bonded with Riz Ahmed's Carlton Drake, the head of the Sinister Life Foundation, manipulating him to aid in bringing more symbiotes to Earth, leading Venom to intervene and thwart their plans. In the comics, Riot's origin differed significantly. While still connected to the Life Foundation, Riot was not a separate individual, but rather one of Venom's many offspring. Riot, along with Phage, Agony, Lasher, and Scream, was artificially created by experimenting on the Venom symbiote, forcing it to asexually reproduce five more symbiotes. Unlike some of its siblings, Riot rarely operated alone, often seen alongside its fellow symbiotes. The initial host of Riot was Trevor Cole, a volunteer chosen from the Life Foundation security force. Together, Trevor and Riot were intended to serve as the superhuman police force for the utopian future envisioned by the Life Foundation. Though Riot made its debut in the comics as part of a symbiote team, its character in the movie diverged from the original source. Nevertheless, Riot's appearance on the big screen elevated its recognition among Marvel fans and cemented its status as one of the prominent symbiotes in the Marvel Universe. Scorn Symbiote After Cletus Cassidy and the Carnage Symbiote were separated, the alien entity became the subject of an advanced prosthetics experiment led by scientist Michael Hall. In this experiment, the Carnage Symbiote was used to create hybrid prosthesis, merging technology with the symbiote itself. Through this process, a new symbiote spawn was born, which would later be known as Scorn. Dr. Tarnis Neves, an amputee, was forcibly bonded to the newly created symbiote when it sought to free and reunite with Cassidy. Taking on the name Scorn, she possessed unique abilities due to 
to her symbiotic nature with technology. Scorn could seamlessly merge with and control technological components, granting her an edge over other symbiotic spawn. Initially rejecting the symbiote, Tannis Neves eventually embraced Scorn after witnessing its potential for destruction in the wrong hands and used her powers for good, aiding Spider-Man and Iron Man in defeating Carnage. Scorn operated as a hero for several years until the tragic event of the Absolute Carnage storyline, where she met her demise at the hands of Carnage. It's worth noting that Scorn was affected by the awakening of the Dark Elder God Null, the creator of the symbiotes. In a desperate attempt to free Null, she even resurrected Cletus Cassidy using a sample of the Grendel symbiote, hoping that Null would possess him. However, the experiment resulted in a deadly struggle for control between Cletus and Null, leading to a tragic fate for Tannis Neves and the Scorn symbiote. Lasher Symbiote As one amongst the five sibling symbiotes forcibly spawned out of Venom, Lasher was a green symbiote who originally bonded with security officer Ramon Hernandez and possessed the unique ability to create tentacles and tendrils, utilizing them like additional limbs and whips. Alongside his Life Foundation siblings, Lasher fought valiantly until they were seemingly slain by their fellow symbiote Scream. However, the truth remained concealed from Venom as the US government discovered that the symbiotes had survived in Carnage USA No. 2. While the hosts of the Life Foundation symbiotes had perished, their symbiotes endured. The US government strategically paired each symbiote with a different member of the elite special ops military unit called the Mercury Team. Due to the damage sustained from their last encounter with Eddie Brock, each symbiote was partially bonded to augment a specific part of the host's body. For instance, Riot was connected to a member's feet, Beige with another's hands and eyes, and Agony with the shoulders. Lasher, however, was partially bonded with the team's leader, Marcus Sims, as well as Sims' loyal German shepherd dog. This transformation turned the canine into an immaculate warhound, while creating creating a leash-like tether between the pup and his master's hand. Even though this approach proved effective, Carnage tragically murdered the symbiote's new host during one of his ruthless rampages in Deadpool vs. Carnage. Misery Symbiote This unique agenda symbiote displayed striking physical characteristics with red and white furnace-like hues on its body. Misery is a hybrid symbiote born from Alchemax's experiments aimed at weaponizing different strains of captured symbiotes. Fascinated by the garbage symbiote's refusal to merge with others, Dr. Steven and Liz Allen experimented with it, leading to the creation of Misery. Its birth involved bonding a sample of the Carnage symbiote to a chimpanzee named Grace, which was then exposed to the anti-venom serum. But later, the terminally ill guardsman Corwin Jones stopped all of Alchemax's symbiotes after being bribed by the Life Foundation. During this chaos, Liz was exposed to a sample of the hybrid symbiote, and it bonded with her. Grace, now possessing a stabilized form of the Misery symbiote, sought revenge for the experiments conducted on her, but she was subdued and recaptured. Liz, on the other hand, discovered her newfound powers, which included a greatly enhanced healing factor and the ability to transform her body by liquefying and reforming. As the story progressed, Liz confronted Corwin in his apartment, only to find that he'd bonded with all the stolen symbiotes to create a massively hybrid entity called Madness. Misery's powers are a potent blend of the carnage and anti-venom symbiotes. Due to this constant conflict between the two symbiotes within Misery, the entity is gifted with an immensely powerful healing factor and a highly adaptable physiology. ZZZXX Symbiote ZZZXX made its first appearance in X-Men Kingbreaker No. 2, capturing intrigue as a unique member of the symbiote family. Unlike its counterparts, ZZZXX possesses an unusual method of sustenance. Instead of feeding off a host's adrenaline like other symbiotes, ZZZ slowly feeds on the host's brain, making it a particularly chilling and dangerous entity. Initially discovered by Shayar Emperor Deccan, fate took an unexpected turn when Deccan passed away before he had a chance to study the enigmatic symbiote. Consequently, ZZZXX was classified as one of the five most dangerous criminals ever captured by the Shayar Empire. In a battle against the Star Jammers, ZZZXX found its new host in Raza Longknife. Unlike typical symbiotes, ZZZXX did not bother to seek permission or establish any connection with its host. For Raza, the experience of being controlled by ZZZXX was harrowing and unsettling. So, to liberate himself from the symbiote's control, Raza utilized Medibots to expunge ZZZXX from his body. Currently, the symbiote is contained aboard the Star Jammer after after being thrown into the Fault, a massive rift in space-time connecting to a cancerous universe. Raza and Chod took this opportunity to throw ZZZXX into a colossal creature from that nightmarish universe, which eerily resembled an alternate, twisted version of Professor X. But ZZZXX also has its vulnerabilities and shares the weaknesses of being susceptible to fire and supersonic sound waves. Physically, this symbiote shared similarities with other symbiotes like Lasher, Agony, Venom, Scream, and Carnage. Its black color and variable physical characteristics, such as height and weight, make it stand out among its symbiote siblings.
Sleeper symbiote. Sleeper, a truly unique symbiote, emerged as an offspring of Venom, but it had a remarkable journey that set it apart from its symbiote siblings. Unknown to Eddie Brock, the Venom symbiote anticipated the birth of a new symbiote. To keep the secret from Eddie and to ensure the offspring's proper development, Venom chose to bond it with the lobotomized Telcar. Concerned that bonding it to a human prematurely might result in a monstrous symbiote like some of its siblings, Venom sought the help of Dr. Steven at Alchemax. Working together, they devised a plan to deceive a symbiote task force that sought to take the spawn and bond it to Scorpion. To throw them off their scent, they staged a fake stillbirth and later Dr. Steven was entrusted to care for the symbiote until it matured enough to choose its own host. In Alchemax's astrobiology lab, Sleeper developed extraordinary chemokinetic powers during this time. However, Sleeper's destiny was far from ordinary. Taking a bold step, Sleeper assumed control of Venom's original host, the lobotomized Kree soldier Telkar. This decision allowed Sleeper to embark on an extraordinary cosmic exploration after a brief bonding with Eddie Brock, the host of Venom. It should be noted that Sleeper's powers go beyond the baseline abilities of Venom. It possesses a unique ability to create various liquid and aerosol chemicals, some functioning as pheromone agents, while others serve as corrosive materials for combat. Apart from that, leveraging its emotional agents, Sleeper can employ a form of pheromone telepathy, effectively hypnotizing its victims. When not bonded with a host like Dylan Brock, Sleeper often takes the form of a cat, revealing its shape-shifting capabilities and adding to its enigmatic nature. Silence Symbiote As discussed before, Andrea Benson, a former neighbor and student of Flash Thompson, experienced an extraordinary journey that led her to become the symbiote-powered hero known as Mania. After bonding with a clone of Venom, she gained additional abilities through a demonic hell mark passed down by the symbiote. However, after losing the Mania symbiote, Andy found herself bonding with the Scream symbiote, created by the Notorious Life Foundation. Sadly, Scream met its demise, but from its remains, a new symbiote called Silence emerged. Now, Dr. Steven, seeking to revitalize the Scream symbiote, combined its remains with a sample of anti-venom serum derived from Flash Tom Fuck me, shut up, you cunt. The result was Silence, a powerful new symbiote that bonded with Andy. When Andy was mortally wounded by Phage, Silence instinctively took over a body, dubbing itself Silence to represent the absence of Scream. It masterfully defeated Phage, utilizing a version of Anti-Venom's cleansing touch, which disconnected Phage from the symbiote hive mind. Overall, Silence possesses many of the typical abilities seen in traditional symbiotes and also shares similarities with Anti-Venom, making it a formidable and unique presence in the symbiote realm. Void Knight. This menacing proto-symbiote emerged from the living abyss of the symbiote throne world with a sinister purpose to enslave the time-displaced Silver Surfer and transform him into a powerful soldier for the symbiote hive. However, before the Void Knight could carry out its nefarious plan, Ego, the living planet, intervened, unleashing a powerful beam of psionic energy that engulfed and obliterated the symbiote. Subservient to Null, the malevolent entity was devoted to the mission of extinguishing all light and life throughout the cosmos. In a cruel mockery of the Silver Surfer's iconic surfboard, the Void Knight manifested a similar Giga-esque construct using the Living Abyss. Despite its short-lived existence, the Void Knight was considered one of Null's favorite creations. As indicated in King in Black No. 1's timeline of Null's creations, it stood apart from other symbiotes, including the symbiote Dragons and Exelon, earning a special place in Null's twisted admiration. Mr. E. Mr. E, a cunning and ambitious proto-symbiote, was the result of Null's early experiments in manipulating the living abyss. Initially taking control of a NASA astronaut named Lewis Tuttle as his host, Mr. E aimed to transform the Earth into a black star, making all human life on the planet his shadow slaves. His ultimate goal was to conquer the universe by spreading his darkness far and wide. He clashed with Steve Coffin, the current Captain Universe, who opposed him and seemingly killed him in a crash into the sun. However, Mr. E was resurrected by Null and continued continued his quest to please his master. He bonded with Alistair Smythe at Ravencroft Institute and turned its staff and inmates into shadow slaves. Furthermore, Mr. E later faced Spider-Man, mistaking him for a fellow symbiote, and engaged in various deceptions, including impersonating the sorcerer Merlin. During a confrontation on Nowhere, Mr. E sought to destroy the Ebony Blade, but was stopped by Captain Marvel and other heroes. Even though Null granted him full power, Captain Marvel used the Ebony Blade to defeat him once and for all, ending his reign of darkness. Big Mother. In around 500 AD Denmark, the monstrous Grendel and his unnamed mother terrorized Herot by attacking and devouring men. Seeking aid, King Hrothgar asked Beowulf, 
a legendary hero who's known as Gilgamesh or Bloodstone in the ancient scripture to slay the beast. Beowulf successfully defeated Grendel but angered his mother, leading to her demise at Beowulf's hands. However, in reality, she was magically imprisoned underground by Beowulf and her prison later appeared beneath Los Angeles after drifting across the planet for centuries. In the modern era, Big Mother was freed from her underground prison by Merlin Demonspawn, who performed a dark ritual involving the blood of 100 virgins in a comic book store. <laughs> the irony. Upon her release, Big Mother attacked an employee but was confronted by Marlo Jones, who managed to distract Merlin and halt the attack. Later, she encountered Captain Marvel, engaging in a battle with Merlin while Big Mother withdrew. She even crossed paths with Moon Dragon and also encountered Mordecai Boggs, who offered her a place in his wrestling promotion, FWW, where she was promised the chance to eat her opponents alive. Furthermore, during the Fear Itself event, Big Mother was seen at the Infinite Embassy, specifically at the Devil's Advocacy, engaging in a dispute with other demons over who should be the true Satan. Overall, Big Mother possessed a powerful array of powers and abilities. As a shapeshifter, she can assume various forms and was more of an immortal godlike entity. Grendel Symbiote Billions of years ago, the malevolent symbiote god Null created two symbiote dragons, one from his own blood and the other from his symbiotic essence. These fearsome creatures were sent out into the cosmos, wreaking havoc and destruction on countless civilizations, driving inhabitants insane before consuming them. Their rampage continued for eons until they arrived on Earth in the 6th century CE, taking up residence in a hidden cave behind a waterfall in Denmark. On Earth, these two symbiote dragons unleashed a campaign of terror, laying waste to entire cities and mercilessly devouring wildlife and humans. A cult of cannibals formed and worshipped these sinister beings, erecting grotesque monuments in their honor. One of the symbiote dragons, mistaken for the monstrous dark elf Grendel, targeted Hierot Hall and faced resistance from the mighty Asgardian Thor Odinson, whose divine lightning struck the dragon and trapped it within a glacier, becoming the basis for the legendary tale of Beowulf slaying a dragon. Apparently, ancient Norse carvings captured the battle between Thor and the dragon, revealing that fragments of the defeated Grendel's living abyss fell to earth. These fragments bonded with human hosts, granting the cult knowledge of Null and the symbiotes. Tyrannosaurus Symbiote The powerful symbiote Tyrannosaurus was extracted from the fearsome symbiote dragon Grendel and bonded with a soldier named Rex Strickland during the Vietnam War. Under the malevolent influence of the dark god Null, Tyrannosaurus ravaged Vietnam with its insatiable bloodlust and hunger. However, inspired by the nobility of Logan and Rex, the symbiote managed to break free from Null's control. When Rex Strickland was killed by a Nick Fury life model decoy, Tyrannosaurus assumed his identity and became an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. This unique situation led to the symbiote hunting down its own host, caught in a twist of fate. Years later, Tyrannosaurus encountered Eddie Brock, the current host of the Venom symbiote, and sought his help in rescuing other Sim soldiers. However, their plans faced unforeseen consequences, leading to the resurgence of the Grendel. To stop Null's impending release, Tyrannosaurus merged with Eddie Brock, sacrificing itself in a courageous attempt to prevent further devastation, though a sample of the Grendel survived. In the symbiote hive mind, Tyrannosaurus was reunited with Rex's codex. During Null's invasion, they recruited Agent Anti-Venom and the newly deceased Eddie to confront Null from within the hive mind. While there, they freed other captured symbiotes and attempted to thwart Null's schemes. Even while influenced by Null's hive mind, Tyrannosaurus displayed a sense of humor and wit, emulating the personality of its original host, Rex Strickland. The symbiote was deeply affected by Rex's nobility and refused to rejoin Null's hive mind, choosing instead to ally with S.H.I.E.L.D. and fight against the darkness threat to consume them all. Plague Symbiote Upon arriving on Earth, the dark god Null took control of a symbiote dragon and used it to locate the lifeless body of his loyal servant Cortland Cassidy. Using his immense power, Null imbued the symbiote dragon with a new symbiote entity known as Plague. This symbiote was specifically created to bond with and reanimate Cortland, bringing him back to life. Once revived, Cortland, now bonded with Plague, embarked on a violent path of revenge. Together, they killed several guards at Ravencroft, seeking vengeance for the death of Cortland's descendant Cletus Cassidy, catching the attention of Ravencroft's warden, John Jameson, and advisor, Misty Knight. However, Cortland and Plague proved invulnerable, easily shrugging off their attackers and draining their life force. Despite the confrontation, Cortland revealed that he had another purpose, to avenge Cletus by targeting Eddie Brock. Determined to carry out his mission, Cortland and Plague teleported to escape the scene, leaving behind a trail of chaos and vengeance. Unlike other symbiotes, Plague had the strength to absorb the life force from its victims, adding to its already dangerous nature. Additionally, when bonded to a host, Plague takes on the appearance of its host, much like Payback symbiote. This unique characteristic sets it apart from its counterparts, making it more adaptable and stealthy in carrying out its dark intentions. 
Serpent Symbiote Originally a mindless sample of the living abyss, the symbiote known as Bedlam's Child was obtained by a demon alchemist from the realm of Limbo. Unbeknownst to the alchemist, this sample contained the Codex of the King in black, Eddie Brock, who left a part of it with the alchemist's apprentice. Eddie later encountered Madeline Pryor, and they formed an alliance to help each other. However, their plans went awry when Eddie's memories were ripped out, causing him to transform into the monstrous Bedlam, succumbing to his pent-up rage and unleashing chaos. During his time in Limbo, Bedlam faced numerous challenges, including a confrontation with Darkarth, the King of Limbo. The clash between these powerful beings caused a time split, leading to multiple outcomes of their battle. In one outcome, Bedlam killed Darkoth and evolved into the being known as Meridius. In another, Darkoth expelled Eddie's Codex from the symbiote, and a new consciousness formed from Eddie's rage and bloodlust. This transformed symbiote, now known as Bedlam's Child, was accidentally summoned to Asgard by Loki, where it rampaged uncontrollably. Thor, disguised as Eddie and Meridius, tried to stop it, but were outmatched. Thor eventually bonded with Eddie to overpower Bedlam's Child, forcing it to transfer its consciousness through time to escape. However, it left behind remnants of its physical form, which merged with Helnir, a demonic copy of Mjolnir. The symbiote infused Prometheum from Helnir then bonded with Donald Blake, transforming him into the monstrous serpent. Bedlam's child initially had a mindless existence, but over time, it developed a nascent consciousness from Eddie Brock's residual emotions. It acted mainly on instinct and exhibited powers typical of a symbiote, greatly enhanced by Eddie's King in Black abilities and Helnir's Prometheum. As serpent, the symbiote's appearance changed dramatically, manifesting a terrifying and monstrous form befitting its newfound host. Its powers, influenced by both Eddie Brock's and Helnir's connections, became even more formidable, making it a powerful and dangerous adversary in the Marvel Universe. Extreme Biote Extreme Biote is another one of the symbiote dragons brought to Earth by the Dark God Null during his invasion. Iron Man, seeking to save the life of Eddie Brock after his separation from the Venom symbiote, targeted the Extrembiote with a techno-organic virus called Extremis. In an attempt to free the symbiote from Null's control, Iron Man ended up infusing it into his own armor, but the symbiote remained connected to Null, failing their plans to save Eddie. Dylan Brock later severed the Extrembiote's connection to Null, granting Iron Man full control over the symbiote. During Null's invasion, Iron Man used the symbiote to hijack control of a Celestial, contributing to the fight against Null. After Null's defeat, Iron Man stored the Extrembiote in his lab, showing it to Flash Thompson, who warned him about its unpredictability. Ignoring the warning, Tony Stark eventually bonded to the Extrembiote himself, using its abilities to assist in battles against Carnage. However, Cletus Cassidy's codex within the hive mind called out to the Extrembiote, causing it to merge with Carnage and temporarily overpower Iron Man. Cletus later fused the Extrembiote with the crumbling ruins of St. Estes' home for boys, turning it into an extension of himself. Under the influence of Kenneth Neely, a portion of the Extrembiote became sentient and took control control of his body. Cletus transformed the symbiote into biomechanical armor, seeking to instill fear and chaos, attacking Todd's diner, consuming people, and clashing with Spider-Man and the NYPD. As the conflict escalated, Cletus assimilated a Stark Sentinel Mark II into the Extrembiote to replace the damaged Iron Man armor, and also controlled fanboys using offshoots of the Extrembiote merged with Iron Man suits. However, Iron Man and Spider-Man confronted Cletus, leading to an EMP detonation that significantly weakened the Extrembiote for good. Rascal Symbiote The Rascal Symbiote was born from the hybridization of the Carnage Symbiote and at least one other symbiote. Stolen by Dylan Brock and the Venom Symbiote, it was separated from the Symbiote hive mind using All Black, the Necro Sword. Offered to Normie Osborne to aid in rescuing his father, Eddie, Normie initially hesitated due to his past traumatic experiences as the Goblin Child bonded to the Carnage Symbiote. However, he eventually bonded to Rascal, transforming into the red, white, and black version of the Red Goblin. As the Red Goblin, Rascal aided Normie and Dylan in their battles against Bedlam. Later, facing a resurgent goblin nation led by the undead goblin king, Phil Yorick, Rascal and Normie engaged in fights against the villains. Normie struggled with controlling Rascal's monstrous form, which he called Goblin Mode, but he learned to embrace his darker desires, enabling a better symbiotic bond. When Normie's grandfather, Norman, discovered his grandson's connection to Rascal, he attempted to remove the symbiote, considering it too dangerous. However, Rascal defended itself and returned to Normie's side, forming a more solid and trusting relationship with its host. In subsequent battles, Rascal fought alongside other symbiotes and their hosts, proving itself to be unique and distinct from the original Carnage symbiote. As a newborn symbiote, Rascal displays puppy-like qualities, being inquisitive, naive, and easily distracted. It's prone to feral rages, but Normie learns that these are simply reflections of his suppressed desires. Over time, Normie gains better control over Rascal and embraces its abilities without losing himself to darkness. Warstar Symbiote Warstar is a powerful Type II battle symbiote specially bred by the brilliant Kang the Conqueror in the distant 602nd century with enhanced symbiotic biology. It can take on a humanoid form without a host, 
and thanks to its cybernetic augmentations, it also has technopathic abilities morphing its hands into various weapons like firearms and flamethrowers, and even creating mechanized devices, such as replicating Kang's formidable Time Sword. Originally, it was designed for deployment on Kang's flagship, the Nathaniel, to serve as an obedient soldier under Kang's strict protocols. However, when Eddie Brock's time-displaced codex took control of Warstar, the symbiote immediately defied its programming and willingly surrendered control to Eddie. Displaying an unexpected level of autonomy, it even adopted adopted the name Warstar, rejecting Eddie's playful suggestions for code names. This unique symbiotic bond allowed Eddie and Warstar to work in tandem as they efficiently eliminated three squadrons of Kang's guards. Despite its typical loyalty to Kang, Warstar's allegiance was tested when Eddie framed a duel with Kang as a training exercise. While initially reluctant to fight its master, the symbiote eventually complied and engaged Kang in combat. Warstar's personality leans toward robotic speech patterns, adhering to protocol and speaking in a manner that often includes descriptors of the type of statement it's making. However, its willingness to disobey its master and follow Eddie's lead in the heat of battle demonstrates a level of adaptability and independence not commonly seen in battle symbiotes. Carnage 4 Dark Carnage Dark Carnage, also known as Carnage 4, originated as an offshoot of the symbiote dragon called the Grendel. This fragment survived after Eddie Brock and the Tyrannosaurus symbiote defeated Grendel. The piece was then collected by agents working for the Maker, who intended to merge it with a sample of Earth 1610's Venom symbiote to stabilize it. However, a cult devoted to worshipping Null stole the offshoot and bonded it to the decomposing corpse of Cletus Cassidy, aka Carnage, with the goal to create a vessel for Null's power. During the bonding process, the Grendel offshoot assimilated trace remnants of other symbiotes within Scorn, a former symbiote host, including remnants of the original Carnage symbiote. This caused the offshoot to take on the appearance and personality of the original Carnage symbiote, effectively resurrecting it. Cletus, now reborn as Carnage, became driven to free Null from his prison and sought to apotheosize into a demigod to claim Null's powers and throne for himself. His power grew immensely as it consumed countless codices and other symbiotes. It was able to restore its connection to Null, and during Null's invasion of Earth, Carnage attempted to bond with a human host, but Venom intervened and seemingly destroyed it. However, a small piece survived and later bonded to Arthur Crane as part of a plot to corrupt other Earthbound symbiotes. Dark Carnage's physical appearance evolved over time as it consumed more codices and symbiotes. It manifested a white version of Null's spiral emblem on its forehead and became strong enough to resist powerful attacks, transforming into a towering skeletal form with angular projections on its back and a dragon spider emblem on its chest. As Dark Carnage, the symbiote was deific and took on a godlike appearance, creating symbiote spires and building an army of infected creatures and people to do its bidding to eliminate former symbiote hosts while causing chaos to free Null and take his power for its own. Mayhem. So, May Parker's life took a complicated turn when she was stolen by Norman Osborn at birth and cloned. Now, Kane, Peter's aged clone, saved one of the May clones, but remained uncertain which one was rescued. Sixteen years later, the May clone, grown in a test tube, escaped and sought to reclaim her life. In a battle, May faced a fellow classmate while an explosion occurred, leaving her injured and under the care of the Black Tarantula. During her absence, May's clone, now known as April Parker, replaced her and wanted to live her own life. However, a spirit named May also resided in May's mind, causing some complications. Meanwhile, Peter lost control of his body to Norman Osborn, and May confronted everyone at home, revealing the existence of her clone, leading to a chaotic fight where May, her clone, Peter, and Norman merged into one entity, battling within Peter's body. Ultimately, May emerged victorious, and her clone, April Parker, decided to live with them. She chose a new name for herself, and used her hybrid powers to change her appearance. April displayed a rebellious nature, refusing to adhere to May's May's rules, including the no-kill policy. She was willing to resort to killing to accomplish her goals and even challenge May if needed. Taking on the moniker Mayhem, April actively participated in a gang war, taking down dangerous foes like Hobgoblin and Tombstone. Through genetic modifications, she gained symbiotic abilities and enhanced her natural powers. Her powers include clinging or repelling objects, a spider sense, and due to her symbiote nature, she can create webbing, snares, tentacles, bladed, blunt-edged weapons, and even shapeshift into various forms. Dreadface. Dreadface is a slimy, oozing alien mass with the ability to possess and control animals and beings through physical contact. It was initially contained in a cube aboard Devos, the Devastator's ship, but escaped after an altercation with a Fantastic Four in a crash landing on Earth. This alien mass possesses a jungle gorilla, imbuing it with savagery and bloodlust. This thing attacked the Thing and the Human Torch, leading to a confrontation where both heroes become possessed by Dreadface. The alien reveals its destructive tendencies, seeking out the greatest warriors to use as tools of destruction 
destruction on various worlds. Additionally, Dreadface can move quickly and hide in shadows, and once it engulfs a victim, the outer skin turns grey or black. Even though the possessed creature retains its original form, it's filled with aggression. This alien can transfer itself to other victims through physical contact, but it seems vulnerable to intense heat. In a final battle, the thing leads Dreadface to a crashed spacecraft, where a massive explosion apparently incinerates the alien ooze. However, it manages to survive, showing its resilience and determination to continue its destructive ways. Payback. Mavis Trent, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., led a secret double life as the leader of the True Believers, codenamed Payback. She formed the team after discovering that Oscor had lied about her father, leading to his wrongful firing and subsequent murder. Following her father's funeral, Mavis was contacted by a mysterious individual who referred to her as Pumpkin, a nickname only her father used. This person turned out to be Payback, a symbiotic entity known as a Variant. Payback was previously bonded to Mavis's father, transformed into electromagnetic energy after his death, and was imprinted with his memories and traits, leading it to bond with Mavis, granting her unique powers. Taking a break from work, Mavis learned to control her newfound abilities and tested them in a staged fight with Luke Cage. Despite her efforts, Cage easily subdued her, providing valuable lessons in combat. Later, Mavis assembled a team of whistleblowers to expose her father's murderer, including Ozzy Tanaka, Theo Bomber, and Talon Rourke, her father's former girlfriend. As payback, Mavis utilized her symbiotic powers to seek justice and bring her father's killers to light, all while balancing her role as a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and leader of the True Believers. She also carried out many other missions with the True Believers team as their leader, mostly to fight the bad guys. Flexo Flexo is a unique symbiote that was discovered inside a meteor by scientist brothers Joel and Joshua Williams. They experimented with it, discovering that it could feed on adrenaline and phenethylamine, allowing it to grow in size, leading the brothers to shape the symbiote into a goofy-looking robot which they used to fight crime during the 1940s. Flexo's first recorded use was to rescue his inventors from robbers and a mad scientist. The brothers claimed Flexo was a robot operated by remote control to keep their creation a secret. As they continued to use Flexo in their heroic exploits, he took on a more intimidating form when dispatched to fight in World War II against the Nazis and Hydra. After encountering the time-traveling Eddie Brock and becoming a pawn in Doctor Doom's scheme, Flexo was returned to the Williams brothers and put into stasis. Decades later, during a battle involving Venom and the Gold Goblin, Flexo thawed and escaped, only to be confronted by Venom and Dylan Brock. After severing his link to the symbiote Hivemind, Venom carried Flexo to safety through the sewers. X-Raven X-Raven was a clone created by Mr. Sinister using DNA samples from Kraven the Hunter from the original X-Men and the Carnage symbiote. Sinister removed the sentience from the Carnage symbiote sample but retained its genetic adaptability to create a clone with the talents and powers of multiple originals. After being awakened by Sinister, X-Raven's mission was to obtain DNA samples from every remaining mutant after M-Day. He displayed various abilities, including using Jean Grey's powers to block Spider-Man's spider sense alongside the X-Men senses, as well as wielding vibranium knives to extract samples from Wolverine and Colossus. During a confrontation with the X-Men and Spider-Man, X-Raven showed resistance to weakening techniques and revealed that he possessed the original X-Men's powers. Spider-Man tried to reason with him, reminding him of Kraven's honor and how he wouldn't harm a helpless girl. This momentarily affected X-Raven, but he remained determined to complete his mission. But after witnessing Sinister's treatment of his favored ones, X-Raven realized the truth of his situation and rebelled against his creator. He destroyed the DNA samples and confronted Sinister, declaring that he would not be anyone's slave. The two engaged in a battle that resulted in the destruction of the factory. Although X-Raven's ultimate fate remains unknown, Sinister survived the encounter. Scorpion Symbiote The Scorpion Symbiote was a unique offshoot of Lee Price's symbiote that infected Matt Gargan, also known as Scorpion. Unlike other offshoots, this symbiote integrated with the remnants of the Venom symbiote still present in Gargan's body, resulting in a green and black appearance resembling his previous Venom form. Initially terrified, Gargan quickly embraced the power and addiction he'd experienced as Venom. During the Venom Inc. storyline, Gargan, under the influence of the Scorpion symbiote, clashed with Spider-Man and Agent Anti-Venom, leading to the destruction of the Scorpion symbiote. After losing the symbiote, Gargan became fixated on obtaining another one and eventually acquired a new Scorpion symbiote. His desire for symbiote power made him a target during the Dark Carnage attack, resulting in severe injuries that left him paraplegic. While the Scorpion symbiote didn't possess its own voice, it awakened Gargan's subconscious desire to bond with the symbiote again, as he'd been in denial about his addiction to the power it granted him. Venom 3 
symbiote. The scythe was a machine constructed by the maker with the purpose of harvesting symbiote codices. Initially, the maker claimed that the machine would destroy the codices to study the consequences of amalgamating multiple codices. However, his true intention was to merge them with a sample of the Venom symbiote from Earth-1610. The scythe successfully harvested codices from various symbiotes, including Venom, Carnage, Riot, Lasher, Phage, Agony, Tyrannosaurus, Mania, Sleeper, and others. The machine also collected codices from former hosts like Captain America, Hawkeye, Wolverine, and The Thing. During the confrontation with Dark Carnage, Eddie Brock punched through the scythe's containment tank and bonded with all the collected codices, resulting in an all-powerful symbiote gestalt identical in appearance to Venom, which came to be known as Venom 3. With this newfound power, Eddie engaged in a fierce battle with Dark Carnage and eventually defeated him by manifesting a Necro Sword. Afterward, the gestalt symbiote symbiote merged back into the Venom symbiote, enhancing its abilities further. Anti-Venom 3 Symbiote During Null's invasion of Earth, the metaphysical consciences of several symbiotes and symbiote dragons were trapped within the symbiote hive mind. But Flash Thompson's Codex, still existing within the hive mind, was able to free the imprisoned symbiotes and bond with them. He manifested as a symbiote dragon resembling his anti-Venom symbiote from in the real world, and even resurrected his deceased physical body, becoming the anti-Venom 3. Flash's symbiote dragon form briefly assumed a monstrous appearance when he was enraged by the capture of his former protege, Andy Benson by Alchemax. This symbiote dragon also bonded temporarily with Tandy Bowen, but was later returned to Flash's corpse after she and Flash were converted into Deathlock units. While the anti-venom symbiote has not displayed an individual personality, Flash Thompson has indicated that it has a mind of its own. The symbiote's unity with Flash faltered when they were sent back in time to the Hyborian Age, causing it to act feral during a battle with Zingarans. Venomsaurus Rex In the dark and gritty future of Old Man Logan's world, a memorable creation was introduced, the Venomsaurus Rex. A Tyrannosaurus Rex bonded with the Venom symbiote. It first appeared in Wolverine number 69, tailing Wolverine and Hawkeye in South Dakota, and later returned in issue number 70, now bonded with a Savage Land T-Rex. In the series Old Man Hawkeye, we learn the origin of the Venom-bonded dinosaur. It turns out that the symbiote was after Clint Barton, the former Avenger. In issue number 6 of Old Man Hawkeye, Clint is on the run from the symbiote, now bonded with the lone survivor of a massacre of Jamie Madrox clones. The Venom symbiote replicates itself using the power of the Multiple Man, creating an army of Venoms with a vendetta against Clint. This battle leads Clint to draw the Venoms out into the desert, where he counts on attracting the attention of a T-Rex imported from the Savage Land. The T-Rex chomps onto the symbiote, and Clint leaves it stuck in the dinosaur's teeth as he drives away. Little did he know that this act would lead to the creation of the iconic Venomsaurus Rex. This revelation reframes Old Man Logan's line in Wolverine number 7, where the venom-infused T-Rex first appeared, suggesting that it was a physical manifestation of Old Man Hawkeye's past catching up to him. Marcus Marcus is a unique centaur warrior who experienced a series of extraordinary transformations. First, he was bitten by a werewolf, gaining enhanced physical abilities like strength, speed, agility, and heightened senses. But that wasn't all. Marcus was also bound to an alien symbiote, which granted him the ability to form blades, spikes, and tentacles from the symbiote's substance, further boosting his already impressive roster of powers. Marcus became a deadly asset for Dracula, who dubbed him his secret weapon and enlisted him alongside other powerful creatures to track down Deadpool and retrieved Dracula's bride, Shikla. Another remarkable aspect of Marcus is his diabetic condition, which he manages to control during his fights. However, this ailment doesn't deter him from being a fearsome warrior. Even though he's been described as a perfect soldier with no weaknesses, his diabetes remains a concern for him, and he fears potential complications. Overall, with his unique combination of centaur, werewolf, and symbiote powers, Marcus is a menacing opponent, demonstrating exceptional combat skills and physical prowess. Bizarnage. Bizarnage is a homicidal alien symbiote that came into existence through Project Cadmus's attempt to artificially replicate alien DNA. This nightmarish crystalline creature burst free from its birthplace in the project, wreaking havoc and slicing through everything and everyone in its path. After grafting onto a human host, Bizarnage bestowed his host with its alien elasticity, making it difficult to counter direct attacks. It sought to become Spider-Boy's new host, but the hero managed to outwit it during their battles. Read Prof. Richards, influenced by evil DNA, added to his diet by a rival scientist, set Bizarnish free as an act of sabotage. Grafting onto challenger of the fantastic member Johnny Red Storm, Bizarnish ran amok through Project Cadmus. Luckily, Spider-Boy intervened to protect the scientists from the symbiote's deadly rampage. The battle continued within the genetic research facilities of Project Cadmus, where Bizarnish desired to be Spider-Boy, believing he had to kill the original Arachid to do so. 
However, Spider Boy used his intelligence and agility to outmaneuver Bizarnage, and in a strategic move, trapped the symbiote inside one of Cadmus's energy containment cells. Imprisoned within the cell, Bizarnage's reign of terror came to an end due to Spider Boy's quick thinking and resourcefulness. Crobar. Crobar, a living darkness from the depths of space, arrived on Earth when scientist Nigel Donlevy's machine inadvertently opened a pathway for the alien to reach the planet. Seeking symbiotic bonding with Donlevy, Crobar was met with fear and hesitation from the scientist. However, the bonding eventually took place, and Crobar went on a destructive rampage in Morristown, New York, seemingly feeding on the fear of the residents. Journalist Eddie Brock confronted Crobar during its rampage and realized that the alien was weak to bright light. Using his camera flash, Brock defended himself Self, freeing Krabar from the madness induced by humanity. Krabar expressed great sorrow and revealed its true purpose as an explorer seeking to understand various civilizations throughout the galaxy through temporary symbiosis. Unfortunately, humanity's inner darkness overwhelmed Krabar, driving it mad. Upon being snapped out of its madness by Brock, Krabar was horrified by what it had become and chose to commit suicide to spare the universe from humanity's seed of darkness. As Krabar's form dissipated, Nigel Donlevy, who had been alive within Krabar all along, was released. Overall, Krabar's personality was highly empathetic, and the revelation of humanity's darkness left it devastated and sorrowful, leading to its self-inflicted death as a final act of sacrifice to protect the universe. Spider's Shadow Venom In an alternate universe, Peter Parker remains bonded to his black symbiote costume, becoming Venom instead of Eddie Brock. Traditionally, the birth of Venom occurs when Peter Parker discovers his black costume as a living, parasitic symbiote and rejects it, leading the symbiote to find a new host in Eddie Brock. However, Spider's shadow delves into what happens when Peter fails to separate from the symbiote, transforming him into Venom himself, leading New York's beloved hero to become its lethal protector. In conclusion, these fascinating and diverse alien organisms from the Marvel Universe have captivated its audience with their unique abilities, apart from sharing complex relationships with their hosts. From the iconic Venom, born from Peter Parker's discarded black suit, to the enigmatic Null, the dark god of the symbiotes, these extraterrestrial beings have truly left an indelible mark on the comic book world. Whether it's the sinister allure of Carnage or the tragic tale of Flash Thompson's anti-Venom, symbiotes have brought thrilling and emotional storylines to life, challenging our favorite heroes by pushing pushing them to their limits and forcing them to confront their inner demons. While symbiotes are often associated with malevolence, they've also exhibited empathy and understanding. Krabar's heartwarming story and Marcus's struggle with humanity's darkness showcase the complex nature of these entities. With stories like Spider-Man, Spider's Shadow exploring alternate realities, the intrigue surrounding symbiotes continues to grow. So, it's safe to say that the symbiote saga is far from over, leaving fans eager to witness the next thrilling chapter in the ever-expanding Marvel Universe. As these alien beings continue to shape and challenge our beloved heroes, the symbiote legacy remains a compelling and enthralling aspect of the Marvel Comics mythos. With this, we come to the very end of this video. So, who do you think is the strongest of all symbiotes? Please don't forget to tell us about your thoughts and opinions in the comments below.